Welcome to the footy with mates. Happy Saturday. Hello, Tom. Hi, mate. How are you? Very good, thank you. I'm particularly excited about today, folks. I'm excited every week when we talk to a mate, but this one I have been uh, trying. To, I've been chasing for a while, to be honest. Um, they, I, I messaged your Instagram, but you didn't open it. But then I got you on Twitter. Yeah, I don't know how that. I don't know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> but Twitter's um, fine. <laughs> this person is the. Uh, what would they say? The the artistic director of my favorite YouTube channel. <laughs> this is one that if you wonder how does Broden sleep at night, it's usually by watching right. this gentleman's content as I drift into sleep. It's where I, it's my happy place. It's uh, this person is doing incredible work. They are archiving everyone who's listening to this who likes footy's childhood. <laughs> Uh, if you're my age, uh, and I'm very, I'm very, very thrilled to welcome in Rhett Bartlett, the creator of Retrospective, what? as the as, as your platform. Yes, is thank you. But also a, the applause too. <laughs> a, a, you're in the media as a movie reviewer, and you are, yeah. and, and you and you talk about things across the media and things like that as well. Yes, I, well, I did film review at one point with the ABC for ten years. Yes, who oh, was that for Lindy Burns? Yes, on the Drive program and on the uh, evening program as well. Yeah, I used to yeah. go on Lindy as well. I was going to say. I, I don't think our paths cross, but no, we we had a we we went to a Christmas drinks once, but I didn't want to bring it up with you, but I have met you briefly once before. Did we really? Yes, but don't worry because <laughs> you're you're Red Bartlett, and, I, and everyone knows Red Bartlett. But at the time, <laughs> I don't know. Right. Um, but no, you 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 seem to be a student of Australian media. Is that fair? If you want to say that, fine. Y yes, yes. <laughs> you, well, I, 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 I'm, I could pick your brain forever, and, and before we started recording, we were talking. And we, and it, we could have just kept talking, but essentially, what if I'm looking at your YouTube channel? You have since you were a kid yeah. collected, just taped everything. Is that fair? Uh, I've taped a lot, mm -hmm. and people have given me their tapes that they have in the garage, or really? their grandfather has in the garage, or something like that. So, um, what I do is archive mainly footy stuff mm -hmm. that was taped off the TV. Um, and anything else that's non-footy, could be other sport, that's fine. Um, and so I do that at home. I just digitise off a VHS into a DVD player, into a computer, into a Mac, and then put them online. Can the first, it's the f easy question, hmm. why? <laughs> uh, why? Well, I did it, I started it because of COVID, because really? during lockdown, it was to keep myself sane. <laughs> I had a tape which was Richmond versus Swan Districts, which was a night game in 1982 where Michael Roach kicks 10 goals in one quarter and 10 minutes. Wow. Because <laughs> uh, Swan Districts send over a junior side to play Richmond in, pro in protest. <laughs> and so Richmond beat them by like 190 points or something. And were they all set shots or were there some snaps? and uh, Lead set shots and kicking it off the ground one, of one metre. It was at Whaley Park. And so I just thought I have to get this up online. And someone lent me a VHS to DVD recorder and it started from there. It was to keep me sane during COVID, in all honesty. Really? Yeah. And so then I thought, well, I've got all these tapes at home. Dad's got stuff. When, he, when Dad was coach of Richmond, they would send him tapes and recordings, the off-air recordings of yeah. football matches and stuff. So... Then put that online. We should mark at this point, Rhett's father is a uh, 400-plus gamer, Kevin Bartlett, for the Richmond Football Club. And more importantly, star of, of, of SEN for mm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, mornings many, many for many a very, very long <laughs> time to us. Um, so we will get into that in more detail. Do you, the archiving and the sharing of it, do you love doing that? Yes, I do. Absolutely. What, what do you love about it? Um, well, it, it passes the time for me. So I don't, it's, it's not something I'm paid to do. So it's a hobby for yes. me. Yes. So I've actually got jobs where I get paid to do stuff. So, but when I fin like, I'll finish this interview and I'll go home and I'll, I'm digitising Tasmanian tapes of the grand final broadcasts of the AFL grand final. So it's got all Tasmanian commercials oh, in it. Oh, you beauty! And I'm watching the 1992 grand final at the moment, and every time they um, they do the, the the bounce down after a goal, Tasmania is still in a commercial break. So you miss a good 20 <laughs> seconds of the play when they come back. Wow! Um, so I just do it. It just keeps me happy. I enjoy it. Yeah. I know it's making other people happy. Yes, I can attest um, to that. And you have people who haven't seen themselves on camera for a long time. I remember when I was in that show or yeah. you'll get reporters message you saying, I haven't seen that ever. It it's, makes people happy, right? It's important to me because, and it's, I, I think it's really important for multiple reasons to 
have this all on the record because it is our history in, in, this, in Melbourne and Australia yes. and, and a lot of it can go away and not be talked about anymore. But like I was looking through some of your footage. This is a good one to reference. Um, just the way media has changed and how right. the way particularly AFL is covered yes. and, uh, and how it's changed since the 90s at the very least. Here's a bit of footage of Rex Hunt doing a Sunday morning show. And just a little clip of him here. No matter the members of the press out there who reckon I was a soft player, well, I might have been, but I played 200 more games than you dickheads. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, just this sort of... It's, it, it, uh, that that was the morning show, the yeah, Channel 7 footy show on that, a Sunday. Yeah, that's when Channel 7 was locked in and had... and Well, that's another thing for me as well, right, is not only were there people like Rex Hunt who... Uh, would never be allowed on television anymore, you would think. And mm. people like Sam Newman, rightly so. Like, we need to remember Sam Newman for who he was and the things he did to with the with blackface and stuff like that. It's important to mark these moments, I think, and say, look where we've come and, and sure. look where things are going. Um, that's the negative side of it, and, and it's, I think, important to cut. Like, there's so much footy show content, and it's really interesting to see the way AFL media's changed and evolved. Absolutely. Re I mean, Rex was a character on radio mm. before he was on TV and then Channel 7's placed him. They, I, mean, I think they gave him two shows. He also had I'm Rex Hunt and You're Not where he would literally <laughs> finish the show and then walk over to the other set as the music was playing <laughs> and then he would start his second show. Really? Yes. You don't remember that? No. And they would have the I'm walking. Yes, indeed, I'm talking. <laughs> you don't remember? Well, the, uh, maybe I, I'm talking <laughs> about... This about, about 90s, 96, 95. Right? Talking about Tasmania, I lived in Adelaide and we would get abridged versions of what Melbourne was getting and I remember coming over for holidays to see my nan and granddad and going, wow, they've got these shows. What's like that? there was the spin-off show of Hey Hey at Saturday Day, where Pluck a Duck for a brief period on Channel Nine had a had a, had a Saturday morning cartoon <laughs> show hosted by Pluck a Duck and some sure. um, just some young cool people. Yeah. We didn't get that in Adelaide, and I was deeply upset. So whenever I would come to Melbourne, I would try and watch the right. Pluck a Duck morning show. If anyone finds any footage of that, I would I'll love keep to an see. eye out. But uh, they like, for instance, nowadays there's an oversaturation of footy shows. There is, and I think that's the issue at the moment with my interest in the media and, and, and football. Whereas back then, you'd watch your footy broadcast on a Saturday um, and then Sunday morning there's Rex's show and he leads into his own other show. And the, I think a third show as well when he would do fishing, yeah? Yes, that's right. Rex Hunt's <laughs> Fishing World and he might appear on the 7 News <laughs> later that day doing his tips or something like that. But it was not as though there was three or four or five footy shows throughout the entire week. Whereas now on a Monday, there's like four different footy shows. And but there's there was a lot and of footy shows. There was a lot of footy shows back then, but they were different. Like the yes. footy show was different to talking footy, which was different to yeah. So talking footy was much more serious. Yeah, where you got Bruce on the couch and serious stuff. This is your light-hearted stuff on mm -hmm. a Sunday. Um, footy they had show, league teams. League there teams. Was a late, Dad did a version of league teams in uh, on Channel Seven at about eleven o'clock with Sandy Roberts and Bobby Davis. Um, and then when Fox Footy came along. Uh, there was your 24-hour channel. They got daring as endpoints and they tried to broaden out. Yes, and they, they had like grumpy old men, which <laughs> was Dad and Bobby again. Yeah. The, 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 some of the, the kids, there was an Oz Kick show for yeah. the kids. We were just talking about... Nowadays, um, it's all the same. Young Guns, which the one that we were just talking about off air that I was obsessed with, which was like kind of aimed at teenage or like tweens that would talk about yes. footy. And they played cool music and then they would talk about footy and... There was this kind of this weird pathway, but and then also white line fever. Sure. So talk back radio, where pretty much every second caller didn't turn their TV down. <laughs> so there was feedback, and yeah. that's the that's the sketches you see on TV of Clinton Gribus going. We'll just go wait for you to turn your TV down, and there's a delay. But like you had white line fever, you had they had Fox Footy News yeah. every night, um, and then you sort of your your Fox Footy with Jared and Robbo sort of branched out of that. Etc. But nowadays, like I think Channel Nine recently did a, a show, a Footy Furnace. Furnace is the Sunday night Lee Matthews. I'm like, yeah, because that's what we need. It's the, exactly mm. the same show. Yeah. It's there to. It feels like it's there to compete with First Crack, yeah. which is, um, you know, which is just talk, the first people to talk about the footy, and then Footy Classified is Furnace, but a bit more intense. And then there's Footy Classified again with a different yes. roster on Wednesday. It's the same program. And then 360 is 360. Yes. And then on the couch is yeah. the Fox footy version of footy classified. 
but and, existed before. Yes, them? and and every I mean the original talking footies, the, the 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 best of them all. What and, was yeah? What was that like? Because what was the original? It was Bruce McAvaney and, and Caroline Wilson and Mike Sheen. Mike Sheen. Yeah. Bit of Robert Walls at some point. Yes, Robert came on. I think Tim Lane hosted at one point as well, and Malcolm Blight was also on there, and also I think Tim Watson. Right. But it, I mean, it was your de- what do they call it? Destination TV. So it was it? What was it? Uh, Tuesday nights. Yeah, because the song was Tuesday nights. We're talking footy. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. So you you would just sit down and just watch Bruce. Uh, get, you know, nerd out at Bruce looking at the little minutiae of the yeah. football from the weekend. Well, you can get lost in your YouTube channel and all of this stuff. It's uh, genuinely fantastic. So what I've done is I've compiled my five favorite clips right. and we'll talk through them. And um, if you're watching at home, we'll do a little visual of it on the YouTube video. But uh, here's the audio of it. This is my first clip that I really wanted to talk about. This is the this is titled Nicky Webster singing... National Anthem at the 2000 Melbourne Cup. This is peak Australia because this must have been a month or so after. I think this is her first sort of performance after 2000 Olympics. Yeah, and this is the same day where um, we had that long jumper, Jumping Jai, whatever his name was, and he parachutes down as well. Uh, on this same day, and Mike Brady sings his horse racing song from the stands as well in front of the crowd. Like what was his horse racing song? Uh, oh, uh, that Tuesday on uh, that first Tuesday in November when they ran the Melbourne Cup on the Tuesday in November when they ran the Melbourne Cup. <laughs> yeah, so this is you're right. This is peak Aussie here. And Channel Ten. This is peak Channel Ten potentially. Yes, with as well. Tim Webster back announcing, uh, who would always stuff things up. <laughs> he would always give people wrong names and stuff. This is the moment when Australia probably hit its peak. Like, we just had the Olympics and Nikki Webster is the yeah. queen of Australia. I, I love this. I'm a very big fan of that. Um, I'm glad this, you picked that one. That was an interesting choice. By yes. Way. Well, if you thought that was interesting. See, we've got different choices, I'm certain, yes. of our favourite videos. <laughs> um, this is number two for me. The, and number one is number five, if that makes sense. I'm going from lowest to highest. Here's number two. Right. This is called, well, as you know, in, I guess it was 2002, the Wayne Carey drama. Oh, sure. Yeah. So when he, there was a drama, affairs, and he left the North Melbourne Football Club. Uh, this is a cross from a very young Craig Hutchison. Captain Wayne Carey could be forced into an early retirement as soon as tonight after a bitter internal furor with a teammate. Now, there are allegations stemming from the party of another teammate's house earlier this week. It splintered the kangaroos to their very fabric and prompted crisis meetings today. As Seven News revealed exclusively this afternoon, the playing future of Wayne Carey is in doubt tonight. It may well be over to following it. a three-hour oh. crisis meeting this afternoon that can equate to probably the biggest meeting in the history of the Kangaroos Football Club involving their senior hierarchy. and. The I man- love it because it's Fox footy coverage of... They've collected all of the yes. media around it. Craig Hutchison... You wouldn't even know him if you saw him, Tom. Mm. He's got his full head of hair, he's young, he's whippersnappery. And um, this, but when this hit, it was such a big news story and hit everything. It was the biggest news story of that year. And Fox Footy and, launched with it, I think. Uh, yes, they did an interview with Wayne Carey um, and they, they plugged the hell out, out of it. I know that because I worked at Foxtel for 15 years and so I was on the phones <laughs> where you had to subs- you know, get people connected to the Fox Footy channel. That That is from... Fox Footy's broke so Fox Footy filmed their their media awards, the AFL media awards, which you would, they wouldn't film these days. The so, AFL, oh the MEAA, MAFL thing. The um yeah, so the the awards between the actual newspapers and yeah. radio and TV. The old pat on the back festival. Yeah, mm. and so they screened it for two years uh, live on Fox Footy, and I've got those recordings. And there's some stuff now that probably wouldn't wouldn't go down too well. And there's a few people up on stage a bit drunk, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So this is their montage of that season. Hutchie actually, I have a connection with Hutchie. When, when Dad was doing a breakfast show on Sport 927, which is now, which was 3UZ and became Sport 927 with a guy called Dr. Turf. Dr. Turf. Um, I sort of was the assistant producer or tagged along. Yes. And Hutchie was the producer. And so I would go in with Dad every morning and Hutchie was probably only about 22 or 23 wow. years of age. And I remember we went in there one day and Hutchie wasn't there. And Dad and I are sitting there and it's about five o'clock in the morning before we go on air. 
And suddenly this hand comes up from underneath the table and Hutchie appears and he had been sleeping on the mattress <laughs> in the studio. Wow. Because that was just his life. His You're life just was just 24-7 reporting and, you know, I've got to be near the studio at the time and all that. Interesting. Wow. Different, a different fellow. Yes. He's someone who's just hyper-focused on, oh, he was, on yes. sports empire and media stuff. He was great at getting breaking news, mm -hmm. which as you could see there. And he would do that on the radio all the time. Here's my third clip. Um, I don't, uh, this this is a classic for if you grew up in the nineties. Now, Tom, you didn't you weren't into footy just yet, but if you had grown up with it, this I if the, if I could get a video tattooed on me, I would get this tattooed on me. I don't want to ruin it. Here's you'll know the audio. If you don't wish to know the score, I suggest you look away now. Diesel. So, Tom, back in the nineties. There would be what, one. Wait. The MCG and the Tigers lead it by 27 points. Oh. We'll be back shortly. Wouldn't happen now, Dave. Oh, lead it by 27 points. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the best. That is. Can I a, you know, there's a montage of those. I made a montage. Did you really? Of all the different songs they've used. So that's also online. What are the other songs? Um, hold on. Uh, right on the tip of my tongue by Diesel is is the one. In fact, there's a comedian, Josh Ladgrove, who put in his show halfway through a show once. He went, if you want to know the scores, oh, I went out to Diesel and. That's one of my favourite uh, moments in the show. Our lips are sealed. Our lips oh, are yep. sealed. Yep. Um, now you're pressing the... It'll be on there. We'll have to find <laughs> yeah, no, great. But the, yeah, so Tom, there would be one Saturday or Sunday game on Channel 7. Mm. But there was, what, seven games yep. of AFL being played on a weekend? All at once. All at once. So they would throw to the scores and then Dennis would go... I'll do it again. If you don't wish to know the score, I suggest you look away now. And then a bit of Diesel. <laughs> This, this is peak society in my opinion. <laughs> On this day, halftime, Fremantle were getting pumped by Geelong. People of a certain... Uh, that, that, even if you hear that song on the radio now, I still think if you don't know the score, look, look away, away now. now. And Peter Landy would do it. Sandy Roberts would do it. Drew Morfitt would do it. Yeah. And in fact, they had Peter Landy on the front bar um, a couple of years ago. Yeah. And I messaged him. I said, what you should do is you should get him to throw. <laughs> yeah. To, if you don't want to know the score, look away now. And have Mick... Pretending he's diesel, you know, I really yeah. start right on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> oh man, that's that's that best. is the core memory. For that, me is, that is that is core nineties AFL. At number four, so number two. Sorry, I've done it weird, but that's how I've done it. Yeah. Um, this was this this is also my childhood as well. What is this? This is Channel Seven footage of the promo, the announcement of a new from the makers of The Simpsons. A new show is coming on TV called Futurama. Mm. And it starts with, it says, McDonald's for Happy Meals at the time must have been doing these Snoopy rollouts. Mm. So it starts with a bit of ad of Snoopy into the Futurama promo for Channel 7. Here we go. One dollar. That's peanuts. Here's to another lousy millennium. From the creator of The Simpsons, welcome Yahoo! to the year 3000. Tourist. Cool, just like in Star Trek. Oh, so good. A real live robot. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? As long as it's not about my eye. What's with the eye? I'm unstoppable. This is the series. Prepare for liftoff. You've been waiting for. All right. The world of Futurama coming soon to seven. I can't. I completely forgot I did that. And then it cuts into um, clearly on TV was 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> yes. Live an, the, Just a brief moment. The live action version. Yeah, exactly. Which killed, I think Jeff Daniels is in yes. that as the cool, affable. It's so funny seeing Futurama as this, like, just clips of the pilot being done as this show now that it's been on for, you know, 10 seasons yeah. or whatever. But that's an example of the tapes that I would receive. I'm, I'm very happy when the commercials are still in. Oh. That's more interesting to me. That's, yes, there's, the, the, um, it would have made sense back then. I was a kid who would was a master of doing the pause oh, lovely. when the ads come so mm. you can just have the perfect mm -hmm. movie and it doesn't even feel like you've missed anything. And then there was that point in the cassette tape you could take off the front so it wouldn't get recorded yeah, over. I did that. I would stick the sticky tape over if you wanted to. <laughs> Rhett, I made my own home edition, um, a limited edition mummy pack where I taped the first mummy mm. and then I taped Mummy Returns and then I taped the Scorpion King and I taped the three VHSs together like the boxes of them and made my own mummy special edition and I tell you fucking what, I clipped that off so no one was taking yeah. over those. And did you did you really label it really professionally? Oh yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, it'd be beautiful work. I don't know. I probably threw it out, but um, but I cared about it back then. But uh, oh, it, it, this stuff um, it gets the blood pumping. <laughs> Speaking of getting the <laughs> You're blood pumping, out. yeah. Here is the number one. Wow. All right, uh, this is uh, this is very. Everyone knows what it's going to be. Stay with us here on 10. After the break, we'll have more details oh. on that plane crash at the World Trade Centre. You have put up... Leighton Hewitt, the new pin-up <laughs> boy of tennis, and the toast of the Big Apple. So we've got to talk through this whole set. You've put up 42 minutes oh. of the live Channel 10 Sandra Sully footage of 9-11. So when she was on air and saw this all happen while she was covering the news. Yeah, hold on. Is that the Melbourne feed or the Adelaide feed, do I say? Uh, you have... you've. Time stamped it. I don't okay. know. I don't know if you say if it's. So this was during. So for people in Melbourne, this occurred during. Uh, most of them would have been watching Talking Footy. Talking Footy. You also have that footage as yeah. well. And Nick Holland is on. Yes, that's right. And but it, but it was delayed into Adelaide, I think. So they got all of Talking Footy and then went to the breaking news. Right. So there's two versions of that online. This is the Channel Ten one. So I, which I think was interrupting West Wing. It's pretty fantastic to. St- to hear in retrospect, a plane has hit yep. the World Trade Center. Beck and Leighton Hewitt, the toast of New York, mm. next to each other, is something that you can only get because he won the Australian uh, the US yes. Open the day before. I remember. Really? Yeah. That's if you watch crazy. the Channel Seven footage, they go to a news break and Natalie Barr announces there's a plane crash, and then they just go back to talking footy. Yeah. For another twenty minutes, because talking footy would have been pre-recorded, I yes, imagine. So they be, yeah. they're just like, "Hey, how good <laughs> footy, <laughs> everybody!" Nick Holland, yeah, let's just cut to the news. Um, and I just want to talk. So this is happening. This is live time, and then it goes to the ads. And the ads in this period are just so good, and for like weird in context. Classic Channel Ten news. Just on a side note, how um, sports tonight needs to come back. I know no one watches TV anymore. Like, TV is dead. Do we really need another sports program but, on TV? Yeah, who was the, what was his name? The guy who says sports tonight on Channel 10. Tim, Tim Webster? Yes, Tim, yeah. Tim Webster. Yeah, Tim Webster. And um, it was all the sport, but they'd also throw in, like, a cool song to the highlights. It had a really yep. cool vibe. A lot of shows now are really hyper-focused on one sport. But that show yeah. is everything that's happening. You know, here's the Tour yep. de France, tennis. F1, tennis, footy. Rugby. We don't do that anymore because no. why would you? But TV's dead. Anyway. I think there's a commercial here that's... Yes. In retrospect, not ideal. Yes, absolutely. So... It's a night that will tempt fate. I'm a big believer in fate. A night that could change everything. Five ball a strike. I'm going to ask you to marry me. It could be the most defining moment of their lives. What show is this? Ed. Ed. <laughs> so there's a promo for a show called Ed, which was about a guy who ran a bowling alley. And it has the mum from Modern Family in it. Oh, right. Okay. And yes. she's also from Happy Gilmore. Her name escapes me as I sit here. Julie. Yeah, that sounds good. Bowen? About... Oh, that you... Hey, Rhett. Don't know where that came from. Correct. Julie Bowen. Have, have they used the sound like a bit of Sweet Symphony there? That would have oh. been probably the... That's a temping of it. So, yeah. hold on. Yeah. Channel 10 yeah. must have bought the rights to Bittersweet Symph- Symphony. Yeah. Sympathy? Sympath- Sym- Symphony. Symphony. Uh, because that's on everything. Is it really? Everything. And every montage that they did for the footy back then was that. <laughs> the the um the opening the theme song for Ed yeah. was um Next Year by Foo Fighters. Mm-hmm. I remember that. Wow. And it was about a guy who ran a bowling alley. Ed hasn't lasted time. Yeah. Hell, it hasn't st- stood the test of time. It's forgotten. It was on eight thirty Wednesday nights. Next ad. Lady going through a market in Italy. Oh no, you're in Spain. This tomato, the tomato. If you want to buy a few tomatoes, it's a visa ad. Oh, right. Take advantage. So she bought some tomato. She bought a white shirt for tomato day. Wait, is it visa or is it like American Express or something? We'll see who we come to at the end. Take advantage of Diners Club. Diners Six Club. million locations is worldwide. Is that even around? So that's fun. That's no longer around, is it? No, no Diners Club died. No, so Ed's not around, Diners Club's not around? <laughs> yes. It was foreboding. <laughs> um, Thursday morning, 7.01am. It's got Wayne Hope. Director Wayne Hope is acting in it. Hey, what do you reckon we go and grab some bacon and egg McMuffins? Mm, yeah, yeah. Is a McDonald's breakfast calling you? So he put the, the McMuffin wrapper in front of the air conditioner so the people in the back... Could would smell, smell the yeah. McMuffin, but why? Are, there was just like a man in the back seat with a student, with a student, and then Wayne Hope in the front. Is it not a driving lesson? 
Is that what it is? I could be wrong. But by the way, how short are the ads? Yeah, uh, they're 15s. <laughs> compared to really nowadays. Quick. Yeah. Really quick. Next one. Vista. Stop looking. Carl Langdon. Carl Langdon, Carl Langdon there. Yeah, for West Coast. Everything. Go straight to Vista Blinds for the lowest prices guaranteed. Call 13 16 13. That's 13 16 13. That is a short ad. Just a man yelling at a camera. Does <laughs> Vista still exist? Mm, maybe in another format. Or it's been acquired I've heard of, or, I've heard yeah. Of Vista Blinds and stuff. Yeah. 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 But he was, I remember him doing that, the Vista Blind ads. Next one. Come on, keep up. Telstra. Oh, where all the numbers would come to life. In a world full of numbers, Telstra's looking for new ways to keep yours performing better. Whether it's your home phone, it. running around with some numbers, or internet, we're making sure your numbers work hard for you. Call one three double two double zero for more information. What does that mean? What does making your numbers work better for you mean? Still don't know what that ad's about. Yeah, what does that mean? Making your numbers work for you, like your landline numbers. <laughs> I don't understand. There's some form of business plan, right? There's... Should we call the number or not? One three double two double zero. Is that what it was? Yes. Yeah, we should, Brett. <laughs> We Surely should. it's still not, not connected these days, right? Or you'll just get a touch. You'll be, no, you'll be on hold for an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Either way. Didn't you, they you're s- actually dialing it. Yeah. Okay. This is a podcast, right? This is an ABC. We Sorry. Can... No, you're right. It's very <laughs> different. <laughs> Telstra Exchange City West. Thanks for calling Telstra. Okay. So they've kept the number. They're that's great. Oh, that's very cool. And so, that num- so they looked after their numbers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They really did. They, yeah. Yeah, they look, Of course. Next ad has a, a model. Close shot of a model. And the music from American Beauty. And Moby. Oh, this yeah. is for some skincare, surely. Sanity. It's an ad for sanity. <laughs> it's models. Chill out session two. From Ministry of Sound. Chill out session two, Ministry of Sound. Yeah, I would I was listening to that stuff. I love Ministry of Sound. I liked it back then a lot. Yeah. Well so that cool. was quite soothing. Yeah, it's Moby. Mm. And, and then, then it cuts into a man oh in boy. an ec- in a row of a plane oh. eating I think it's twisty shots they're called. Have a look at this, Tom. Flies out a plane window because he ate some twisties shots. He gets sacked out of a plane window. Back to... Watching 10's late news. Details now on this breaking story. And we know the rest. But (laughs) fucking... The twisty yeah. shots into that. Yeah, that's outrageous. I reckon they, the uh, ad campaign might have said, we're not going to run that again. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just kill the yeah. twisty No shots. one's going to remember that, are they? Is anyone, does anyone record this? <laughs> that's like this year, Colgate's ad of Isaac Heaney. When Christian Matruck is backing in, mm. and oh, Isaac Heaney comes in mm. and sticks a knee right, right into, into his yeah. spleen. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think I've seen that in the last few weeks, to that's, be honest. Uh, what, that's probably nine weeks now. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. The, tribunal. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. You should have just tackled him. Absolutely. Yeah. Come on, Isaac. Well, he did up, end up missing, because of the, but not because of the Colgate no. ad, but maybe a little bit because of the Colgate <laughs> ad. Um, well, they're my top five. Do you have some that you love, Rhett? Uh, sure. Mine are completely different to your, yours. Yeah, so sure. my top five are just, well, a couple are just my discoveries. So, for instance, the uh, 1973 grand final, a VFL grand final. Who's playing in that one? Richmond versus uh, Carlton. But the reason is it's in colour. Yeah, you've got here Channel 9's colour recording of 1973 VFL Grand Final, Richmond and Carlton. Sure. So this, so Channel, so Channel 7, Channel 9 and ABC all broadcast the Grand Finals back then. At and, the same time? Yes, at the same time. And they what? would show, that, show it as a replay later that night. And they were all in black and white. Wow. But because Colour TV was coming into Australia very soon, Channel 9 actually filmed the Grand Final in colour, but broadcasted it in in black and white. Is this a Kerry Packer kind of thing? Is this a, uh, be an edgy... No, it was just before, no, it was before him. Right. And so I'd always heard rumours that it existed in colour. And so I reached out to Channel 9 and a guy called Hugh Naylan, who's the head of news over there. Brian Naylan? No. No. Different, different surname. Right, right. And, right, that'll do it. <laughs> and, yeah, true. And he had a look with Tony Jones and said, yeah, we, we have it. And he sent it to me and he allowed it to... Be uploaded, and so that's now the earliest color grand final that exists of the AFL VFL. So when I hear that, I go, "That's a pretty niche market who wants to see that." But then I look at the views: one hundred fifty-one thousand people <laughs> yeah. have watched this. 
Yeah, you may think it's very niche, but it covers a few things. Richmond supporters, Carlton supporters. Um, Colour supporters. Colour supporters, <laughs> black and white supporters, uh, everything like that. So that's probably my favourite find over the last four or five years. That's incredible. It's like, it was just like one of the holy grails of missing football footage. That's the first one we've ever seen in colour? No, yes. as, as far as full coverage, because they'd be colorized footage from the 60s here or there. Yeah, the newsreels and stuff yeah. like that. But that, that, this was a transmitter. So this was only shown in color to the director in the director's booth in the van on the day. And your dad's playing, I can see. He was in the middle there. Yeah, he's the one with the bad comb over. No, I think it's an incredible <laughs> comb over. That's an iconic comb over. That, that's uh, statuized, isn't thank it? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a statue with the comb over. Yeah. Uh, I bought a list very quickly. Yes. Um, the 1982 Commonwealth Games, there was a... Uh, a a football match played as a, um, really? a demonstration sport to yeah, those right. who went to the Commonwealth Games, and it was Richmond versus Carlton. Really? At the Commonwealth Games, a footy game? Yes, in 1982. And uh, the Commonwealth Games was broadcast by the ABC back then. Um, trying to get footage from the ABC... Um, <laughs> trying to get anything. Is anything. Notorious. They will yeah. give you footage. They'll give you um, 30 seconds of footage for a dollar. No, wait, oh, hold on. No, sorry. I'll give you, oh, sorry, a second of footage for $30. Rhett, oh my Lord. minimum, minimum of $30. Start it. Do not get no, me I'm wound up about I'm, the ABC. I'm happy to, on a separate <laughs> podcast one day, to talk to you about that. Um, the Wayne, ha Wayne Harms tap on from 1979 grand final, the footage where he, oh. he taps it on. So I discovered that ABC's cameras were slightly to the right of the Get stuff. Channel 7 footage. And so by uploading that, we discovered that Wayne Harms was in. And that made it onto that. That uh, I think was the third news story on Channel 7 last year. Mm. Uh, as we've discovered that the ball was actually in. Get stuffed. I didn't know that. How did you miss it? That's incredible. <laughs> well, I don't care. I think they both lost, in my opinion. <laughs> Colin with Carlton. But that's. Th that's incredible. No, well, no one would have found that out unless you went looking for that. Or we're so doing what you do. A few do. people had suggested that ABC's camera was slightly to the right of Channel 7's, but no one had actually really looked for it. Wow. So I uploaded it. Go and on. there it is. Uh, and in 1966, Richmond played Carlton. It was Tom Hafey who coached Richmond, mm -hmm. his first game as Richmond coach, and the siren failed to sound at Princess Park. And um, what happens is a policeman runs onto the field, uh, sorry, a policeman on a horse comes onto the field and tries to get the umpire's attention uh, and play just continues around him. <laughs> Players are defending the ball. It's in 1966. It's Richmond versus Carlton. And that footage was in the National Film and Sound Archives. It was about nine minutes. It was on a reel on the end of an episode of Homicide from 1966, <laughs> right. a, a cop show. Yeah. And they said, here we go. Do you want this? And uh, that to me is just one of the holy grails. That is Siren that. Gate before Siren Gate. Yeah. Wow. And on the back of Homicide. <laughs> <laughs> That's so yeah. good. What a list. That's fantastic. And we've mentioned a few times that, yes, your father is um, probably one of the most iconic football players in the history. He's, he's up there. Is he a hall, he's a Hall of Famer, of course. Uh, he's a Hall of Fame legend. He's a legend. Yeah, he's yeah, legend he's status. Legend, so yeah. One of like, what is that? A very few amount of people. Well, Dunstall was the most recent, wasn't he? So I think he's about 26 or 27. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how, how much of your childhood do you remember your dad playing? Uh, none. None? No. So he finished in 1983 uh, and I was four at the time. Mm -hmm. But then he uh, coached Richmond yes. from 1988 to 1991. And so all my memories are from there because I would follow him to the footy and to train in a punt road and into the rooms before the game and after the game. Um, so all my memories from the time when he was coaching and he was, for those who don't know, he was famously sacked as Richmond coach. <laughs> we got a knock at the door about two hours before they appointed Alan Jeans as coach and um, dad um, told the person in no uncertain terms to go away. <laughs> um, and then Say I just... by jingoes? By any, he <laughs> said something worse than that. <laughs> okay, oh, <right>. jinkies. <laughs> and um, I remember uh, the, the, then the media got onto the news and so they were camped out the front of our house and one of the Channel 9 reporters sort of made it up onto a balcony and was peering through a window and Dad saw that and I've heard there was expletives that I've never heard before <laughs> in my life. So that's my memory of my father's sort of football career. Yeah. It's all his playing, oh, sorry, his coaching career, not his playing. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So did you spend a lot of time at Tigerland as yes. a kid? I, I, Every day after school. My, my grandfather and uncle were Richmond supporters and I was very, they're almost my second team because I grew up with them around. 
the Richmond I remember as a child through my life from 1989 to genuine 9 to 2017 right. is a very different Richmond to what I think exists now in my head. It's a, like, right. because that was a time of uh, sadness and and negativity, but also just like this rich ingrained that that I, I I attribute the '70s logo so deeply to that whole period of time. This okay. This the, how do you see the old Richmond before the three flags? Um, we were maybe the best way to describe this is when we when we won in 2017. I mean, all Richmond supporters cried. Yes, I I cried. But I also at the same time remembered how low we had been because when Dad took over, we did Save Our Skins. Yes. Save Our Skin, sorry, which was a rattle rattle the tins. You had to yeah. make a million dollars um, within, I think, a month to, for the club to survive. Which is so, a crazy thought. Now. Yeah. And so you would rattle your tins out the front of games and at intersections, et cetera. Um, so for me, it was such... We had reached the mountaintop in 2017. I remember when the siren went, I just thought to myself, it doesn't matter what happens from now on. I've mm. seen a premiership. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't matter if we win another one or never do. Um, but I love how you, you equated the logo. Is that the old, that old 70s? Shit, yeah. Every team had so that good. old sort of campy so style logo. Yes. Um, and then they changed the logos along the way. And now that's a retro logo, obviously. Yes. It's on T-shirts and, and mm. beanies and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So... Um, it's a tremendous logo, and they should actually bring it back. Bring and it then back. the '90s one as well was also fantastic. Yes, the the roaring is that the, the roaring tiger. Roaring tiger, and there was one where the tiger was sort of on the look into the left as well. Yes, they've all been pretty good logos. I I associate this one as the I call it the Brendan Gale logo because it feels like it's his era. Then wait, he, which one? Which logo? The one now. The yes, one, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, but uh, the one before it, I think uh, Richmond has a beautiful aesthetic to the whole situation mm. from the old school. Um, ground that I'm so jealous of next to the MCG when my football club doesn't have a fucking a square of grass anywhere, and then just the colours and everything. It's um the theme song. The theme song. You're are you the official historian of the club? Is that right? Yeah, that was a title they've actually bestowed on me. Look at that. So they they took me into a meeting and said we're going to make you the official historian. I said okay, that <laughs> adds a lot of pressure, <laughs> does it not? Now everyone just assumes that I I know everything. Well, about now, now it doesn't matter. You just do whatever you say is so. Yeah, I'm so like yeah, yeah, that's right. I just rewrite the history. <laughs> exactly right. We'll talk about your well, uh, my. I know your dad a little bit from watching footy with my grandfather and stuff like that, but more so my direct relationship, and I know Tom's as well, is driving to work or driving to uni and hearing him in the mornings and that being um, re on SEN. Hungry for sport. Hungry mm. for sport. Um, F yeah, what, you used to say what? Five past nine, good morning. Welcome to Hungry, yeah. hungry oh. for Sport. Oh, mm. So good. Um, every, he, he, it felt like what he used to do. And I, I'm curious if you know his approach to doing callback mm. SEN radio because it is an art form. Uh, that Dwayne Russell's doing very well at the moment. I was just listening to him coming in, just engaging with it perfectly. But it felt like on a quiet day, he would just say the right thing to get the phones working up. And, and it's, it's an art form. Do, do you know if he put it, the, his thought to that or? Um, I, well, I should say he generally cared about the people who would call into his program. Sure. Because he, I remember he would say to me, that might be the only, you know, you don't know their backstory. That might be the only person they speak to that day. They might live alone. So that's their, yes. this is their outlet of speaking, you know, getting on and speaking to someone. So he was very respectful of that. But separate to that, he could, you know, when he knew when to nudge, you know, particularly <laughs> yeah. Carlton supporters, you know, yeah. you, know, you know, I respect Carlton a lot, you know, he would say, and that would just get people riled up a little bit. And they had a barbecue out at the front of princess park one day to race because he's like i can i can get more members to join carlton if we do a barbecue or something like that <laughs> so there he is so that that theatricalness he, he he could do because you probably don't realize he was on he, he was on the original world of sport panel sort of in the 80s right which was this big channel seven show on a sunday so and sam newman was on that and jack dyer and lou richards so he he sort of learned from those showmen right okay how to sort of engage and and yeah. you know tick the right box and press the right buttons. He's, he was a calm footballer from the highlights I've seen. A calm footballer? Was he? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as a I've never heard him described as that. <laughs> yeah, but then as a presenter as well, he was really almost zen to listen to every morning, uh, even though he was talking about yes. the issues of football and stuff like that. And I was just like, and his knowledge of sport, I mean, why are we talking past tense? He's still around. Yeah. His knowledge of sport is incredible. He yeah. loved boxing particularly, 
horse racing and football. They were his three passions. Mm. Salt of the earth, 60s, 70s bloke, that is. And it would have Patrick Smith would come on. Venom and, Greg Denham is the one I remember. What a what an absolute... And he would play the theme song, Denim and Lace, Denim and Lace. <laughs> and I think Greg Denham hated that song. Yes. Well, he was... Well, you remember Greg Denham as well. I, I remember this very, very strongly your father upsetting him daily and that was like yes. what I listened for. Was <laughs> that was he great. could get under his skin so well. Yeah, and I think he generally felt annoyed most of the time. Yes. My favourite dad moment on, on that show is he commentated Adam Scott um, winning the Masters right. off the TV. <laughs> um, I haven't got it online. I don't think it's up online. And it's my dad calling off the TV that the ball's in the hole, the ball's in the hole, you know. <laughs> I'm just like classic. And then there's also the... the <laughs> it's in the hole. <laughs> and uh, then there's the uh, infamous um, uh, Mark Allen. I'm just trying to find it and I can't find it online. You just type in Mark Allen car crash. Oh, don't sure. worry, I've done it. And I've put Kevin Bartlett there and the... Oh, right. There's Kevin Bartlett rollover footage interview. Did but, he? No, there's a there's also a racing car driver called Kevin Bartlett. There you go. Ah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to recreate it. But on on Kevin on Kevin's show, Mark Allen from Drive, who is now on Three Eight. Yeah, he he was the golf correspondent yes. on Dad's show. Called in to talk about the golf. Yeah. And then he just go, he's like, he goes, yeah, and so, you know. Oh, I've crashed the car, KB. Yeah. <laughs> Your dad famously said, buy Jingos. Yeah, well, Jingos. <laughs> yeah, Jingos. <laughs> which is a very, which is a very dead thing. <laughs> oh, Jingos. And that made it around the world. Uh, Keith Oberman had it as his idiot of the week or something like that. And <laughs> yes. it, was, it was the guy crashing the car. It was Mark Allen crashing the car. Oh, well, great. I'm glad to hear he's well. That's good. Um, uh we, we must have you both on one day to talk through every essay. No, trust me, you do not want that. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, we'll be the world's longest podcast. The last thing I wanted to... Do you, lo you love footy? Do you love footy still? Uh, no. You don't like it anymore? I, I watch football for its historical connection. Yeah, you don't watch it as a... So I don't... In, I'm not really enjoying football as it is at the moment. What about it? So having watched a lot of... 80s and 90s football on tape again recently, I can assure you that the commentary back then is oh, far superior to red. what it is now. And the concern we have at the mo I have at the moment is that the complete saturation of football. Right. And too much football. Too much. Too much media coverage of football. Mm. And games as well or just the coverage around it? Games are okay. I mean, I still wish they were games played at the same time on a Saturday. People don't like that, but I just wish it did. But there's the, it's the saturization of football in the terms of they'll, they'll have two callers and three special comments, and then they'll throw to the studio where there's three people talking about the game, and we're just dissecting it to its nth degree. Mm. And I'll watch a footy match from the 80s, and it's Sandy Roberts and Jared Healy calling, and let's go to Dipper on the Boundary, and that's it. <laughs> that's the, com the coverage mm. for the and week. And it's just... It's, just much better. And the pl I mean, footy back then, I think, is still much more enjoyable to watch. One-on-one, yeah. -on -one, Ablett one-on-one -on -one in the goal square, Dunstall lead in, yeah. Lockett, etc. Nowadays, it's just a mass of people. There's a, yeah. It's a role in more. Mm. When you talk, focusing in on the, on the commentary, what was great about them and their commentary? Well, I, I better watch what I say here. I, I think they didn't have egos back then. Right. And they weren't calling every moment as though they wanted to be on the highlight reel. Gotcha. And they modulated their broadcasting and they allowed silences in the broadcast. So, silences? Broad yes. Right. In, during the broadcast. So there might be 10 or 15 seconds where there's no commentary. Really? As they're just watching the, the play move on, etc. Nowadays, you can't go one second without three of your people. No, I, as, a, as an active mandate, I think, I think it's to have no space or genuinely. Not at yeah. all. Yeah. That, that's fascinating. That's so. Do you think what would what would you implement if you were put in charge of coverage when new rights come in next year and one of the one of the I don't I don't Brett, know if you're I in wanna, charge. I don't know if I want to answer that because last <laughs> year, last year I did a tweet on Grand Final Day where I said let's review uh, the commentator's performance on Grand Final Day as the commentators review the players. Mm. Like they always give them a score out of 10. You know, this play, mm. he only had four touches, so he gets one out of 10. I said, well, let's, why, not, why don't we do that for the commentators? Why is it always just one way? Why is it commentators to players? So I did a tweet saying, rank these commentators' performances, you know, and I listed all the, the yeah, people yeah. who commentated. Well, I had three of the commentators text me going, this is not, you can't do that. Really? This is, that's a bit unfair. You're too close to them. Thing. That's the problem. Yeah. Not we, at all. No, I just. We, we, <laughs> we have a guy in Canberra. I've, 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 I've a listener of this show who does stats on commentary 
and he tells you how many times a commentator will oh, wow. be biased to one team versus another okay. and how much um, adjectives or flowery language or if they're more complimentary to one team. We're, we're accruing the data, right? So don't worry about that. And you did ask how, how I would improve it. <laughs> yes, that's right. I want to know that. <laughs> just firstly, cut in half the number of people broadcasting. Gotcha. So just go, just have either two main callers and a special comments. Um, you don't need a... We don't need a post-show review of every game. That's what the weekend shows were for. That's what Talking Footy was for. Yeah. But we've literally got a, a review, a half-hour show review of every game, even the most pointless games that no one cares about at the moment. Yeah, I fall asleep watching them in the change room. Like, they'll still be on air until <laughs> into the 11 mm. p.m. Yes, that's right. You can leave. <laughs> yeah. Like, back in the old days, we the game would be over and Pete Lane would be like, that's the score, good night. <laughs> yeah, We're off to yeah, Hey Hey, it's Saturday yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nowadays, they hang around. I mean, that's the 24-hour footy, Fox footy for you. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that would be uh, my main suggestion. I love it. Um, Rhett, this has been a fascinating chat. I just want to close it out with you're also a big film reviewer. What's your films of the last, what, what have you liked recently? Because in my opinion, film's no good no more <laughs> as a general rule. Well, I'm going to agree with you on that. I have not watched anything major yeah. in the last year at all. The last but thing- I can tell you my favourite films. Please. Very quickly. Uh, uh, Jaws, Schindler's <laughs> List, Citizen Kane, um, Clue, which is a comedy from the 80s starring Kim- Tim Curry. Oh, yeah. And um, a film called The Last of Sheila which is a 1970s um, murder mystery on a yacht. This is a unique list, right? Mm-hmm. Written by Stephen Sondheim and Anthony Perkins, who oh, was wow. in Psycho. Yeah, he was the main guy. Yeah. So him and, Anth- and Stephen Sondheim wrote this murder mystery called The Last of Sheila. And um, it's tremendous. It's, it's a bit campy, but it's great. It's got James Mason, James Coburn, Raquel Welsh. This is a strange pick, Red. No, I'm no. going to watch it. For those who, who know the, the movie, they'll be like, oh, yeah, awesome. <laughs> Hell, yeah, I'm going to watch it. Last of Sheila, Raquel Welsh. Was, um, okay, that's a great list. You haven't watched anything in, the, in more recent times nope. because nothing's interested you or nothing's drawn you, not even Deadpool v. Wolverine. <laughs> uh, no, I've, I've been watching uh, Geelong versus West Coast 1992 yeah. <laughs> Grand Final. <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe the fact that every movie seems to be a superhero movie, yeah. which I'm not into at all. I struggle at the moment with nothing. Like, no film's ever been original. Like, even the films we think are original are usually a pastiche yeah. of something else. Romeo and Juliet is based on an old fable from before that. Nothing's new, yep. you know, in quotation marks. But the fact that, like... I want to see a new George Miller film, not a new Mad Max film. Do you know what I mean? I've, yes. Something needs to be Mad Max to be made now, or it needs to be Deadpool to be made, or it needs to be um, Gladiator mm. 2. We don't yeah. need a Gladiator 2. We need people thinking of a new approach to Yeah, that we story. blame the studios for this, don't we? Yeah, well, it is yeah. their I, fault. I, I had that thought yesterday because I was watching Minions with my son, and my wife pointed out that there's three Minion movies. Plus Despicable Me 4. Yeah, and I was thinking like when... When I grew up, I know there was like sequels and stuff, but I remember it was The Lion King, Aladdin. Yes. Like there were other movies, but they came later and but stuff. Lion King is Hamlet, right? But mm. it's an original story. Yeah, but they didn't just go, well, wow, Lion King's fucking killing. Let's make five of them as quick as we can. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. They sort of let yeah. it be for a while. Mm. It yeah, feels all those like sequels, yeah. There is also another film, sorry, called Senna. Spelt. It's about Ant and Senna, the documentary Senna, S-E-N-N-A. I feel like I've seen, seen this. As Direct- the F1 driver center. Yeah. Directed, yeah. directed by Asif Kapadia. So when, without boring anyone, so when I did my movie show on the ABC, uh, it was called Dial M for Movies. Yeah. Mm. I was notorious for never giving five-star films. So I only ever gave <laughs> two five-star films in the 10 or so years that I did it. You were a bit One, more of a David. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, it's much more. Yes, Margaret. <laughs> and mine was Senna, the documentary about Ant and Senna. Oh, the last, the last fifteen minutes of that documentary is as perfect as any piece of cinema ever made. Love that. And then before that, there was a film called The Pledge, which was directed by Sean Penn, and it stars Jack Nicholson, Benicio del Toro. Two thousand one film, right in your wheelhouse as yeah. far as. So The Pledge and Senna are the the last two great five star films. Oh wow! I love yeah. these choices. They're very, they're very uh, like our mate Alexi Toliopoulos, who is a, uh, mm. a a film person. The films he chooses as his great films are so unique and eclectic and different yeah. from. That's a, it's great. Um, Rhett, thank you so much for giving us your time. Please go to 
retrospective. Retrospective on YouTube, but also across platforms you're you're around doing cool stuff. Yeah, on Twitter, on retrospective. Or There's just reels. type in my name, it comes up. Yes. Um, thank you so much. And uh, uh, go to a Tigers game. We ne- They need their numbers. There was 20,000 there on the week. There was. There was only about, yeah, there was 19,000. I wasn't one of them. <laughs> I know I should be being the historian, but I, had, I was working. So yeah, I fair enough. Um, thanks so much, Rhett. Pleasure. Coming. And thank you for watching. And please bounce that pill. <laughs>